New QB, where was the defense? Happy Friday, everyone. Lauren Shahadi bringing you your daily sports update presented by Toyota right here on CBSSports.com. Thursday night in the NFL, a night that was supposed to be a new beginning for the Cleveland Browns, who replaced quarterback Derek Anderson with Brady Quinn, who saw his first NFL start under center last night. The Browns fans welcomed him with signs all around the stadium, but those fans weren't cheering at the end of the game. Check it out, 34-30, your final. Jay Cutler finished 24 of 42 with three touchdowns, one interception. He piled up 204 yards passing in the fourth quarter alone. It was Cleveland's game to lose. They entered the fourth quarter up 23-13, just in time for Cutler to make some magic. He recorded his fifth career fourth quarter comeback victory. He passed for a career high 447 yards and threw three touchdown passes in the final 15 minutes. As for Quinn, he went 23 of 35 for 239 yards. In the end though, Brown's defense couldn't stop the Broncos. Even though they've got injuries all across the board, the Steelers in that very same category. Willie Parker missing practice for the second day in a row Thursday because of a shoulder injury and his status for Sunday against Indy is un certain Big Ben, meanwhile, dealing with a slightly separated right shoulder and a left pinky ligament injury, also didn't practice on Thursday. Well, Terrell Owens making a statement saying the Cowboys were springing leaks long before Tony Romo broke his pinky and their Super Bowl hopes started sinking. He said after they got beat by the skins, that's when doubt began to creep in. And Jacksonville receiver Matt Jones snapped back at Joey Porter a day after the outspoken Dolphins linebacker questioned how Jones could still be playing despite having a felony cocaine charge against him earlier this year. To which Jones said, is Joey Porter the commissioner? Then why would I even worry about it? On to some college football action. Perfection, hardly perfect, but it doesn't matter. Not for Utah anyway. The 10th ranked Utes pulled off a thrilling comeback victory, marching 80 yards in the final minutes and completing a nine yard touchdown pass with 48 seconds left to beat TCU and remain in contention for a bowl championship series berth. It wasn't pretty guys, but it was a win. 13 to 10 was the final. Utah came out on the winning end and despite getting outgained 416 yards to 275. Of course, those two missed TCU field goals helped the cause in the fourth quarter. The loss for TCU comes after they started the game gaining 202 yards in just the first quarter. Speaking of offense, Vatek tired of hearing their offense wasn't good enough. How'd they respond? Darren Evans ran for a school record 253 yards and a touchdown, and the Hokies played stout defense to continue their Thursday night mastery with a 23-13 victory over 23 Maryland. The win helped Vatek improve to 15-3, ending a two-game losing streak. Tampa Bay may not have won the World Series, but Carlos Pena raising the race profile without a doubt on Thursday when he became the first player in franchise history to win the Gold Glove for fielding excellence. It's the first of many for the Rays, a team that reached the playoffs for the first time since starting play in 1998. Texas shortstop Michael Young became the first infielder to win a Gold Glove from a team with the worst fielding percentage in the majors. Pena, Young, Boston second baseman Dustin Pedroia, and Minnesota catcher Joe Maurer were first-time winners. Who's going where in the offseason? Well, Jake Peavy's destination is up in the air, though Atlanta and the Chicago Cubs right now are in prime position to acquire him. The third team making a strong push, the LA Dodgers. Their situation may even be more urgent than that of the Braves and the Cubs because of the number of free agents they are losing. Well, the Trailblazers won't be losing much if Brandon Roy has anything to do with it. Roy made a 30-foot jump for his time expired in overtime to lift Portland to a thrilling 101-99 victory over the Houston Rockets. Roy finished 6 for 18 from the field, 17 points for Portland, which last beat the Rockets on December 20th, 2006. Meanwhile, on the ice, Blake Wheeler helped Boston beat the Maple Leafs 5-2 hours after changing his uniform number. I'm sure that was lucky. He had his first three-goal game in the NHL, and he wasn't the only one to do so. Chris Drury scored two of New York's three-man advantage goals and chipped in a shorthander for his second NHL hat trick, lifting the Rangers to a 5-2 victory over the Tampa Bay Lightning. You, my friends, have a weekend. Practice your hockey, do whatever you want to do. Enjoy it. I'll see you next week.